Good morning and welcome to our Trinity Sunday worship. I do hope that you are all keeping well and I'm breathing that little bit easier now the heat of the past few weeks has left us for a bit. <clears throat> it was nice to have a drop of rain. I personally wish it would rain at night however but nevertheless it did rain and we did need it. In our service today, we have, as usual, a few people helping us in our worship. In a moment, Mariella is going to lead us in her rendition of Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, to get us all in the mood for Trinity Sunday. And after our opening prayer, dear Jacob is going to be reading our gospel reading for us, followed by Amanda, who will be preaching for us. Amanda's having to preach on the little bit of a headache for us preachers. Amanda will be trying to help people understand the Trinitarian God. Naturally, Amanda does a wonderful job, in my opinion. Later on, dear Claire will be leading us with her rendition of O oh Lord My God, regularly voted the nation's favourite hymn. But just before that hymn, we will have a little photographic surprise for you all. But let's begin our service as we sing our first hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
I do love that hymn. It always gives me a lift. So I hope that it has for you as well. Let's just pause for a moment as we pray. Eternal God, source of all blessing, help us to worship you with all our heart and mind and strength. For you alone are God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I'm delighted that our gospel reading is today being read by Jacob, as I said, and following him is our Amanda with her thoughts surrounding the mysterious Trinity. But first, Jacob. So Jacob, take it away. This reading is taken from the Bible version, God's story, my voice, and is a passage from Matthew's gospel. The 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to meet. When they saw him, they worshipped him, though some still weren't sure that he was God's son. Jesus said to them, God has told me to tell you, don't ever stand still. Go and help people to become disciples, all of them, no matter where they live. Baptise them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them the new way of living I introduced to, do, to you. And don't you ever, ever forget this. I am with you always, always. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Jacob. Steve decided to use this modern version of the Bible for today's service. And once again, it's given us a different insight to what is such a well-known passage. God has told me to tell you, don't ever stand still. It's quite a comment from Jesus, isn't it? Anyway, I cannot delay this any further. It's now time for me to pass on my reflections regarding the Trinity, which is basically like me trying to explain the inexplicable. Trinity Sunday is when we celebrate God in all his forms as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. If I asked you to draw God, what would you draw? Some of you may have depicted God as the creator, the immense and powerful Father. Some of you may have drawn Jesus walking on the earth. But some of you may have even been abstract, representing light or love. Google the Trinity and see the amazing variety of pictures that have been created over the years. But I think the key thing is the majority of us normal folk would probably only have drawn one of the three. The one perhaps we find connected to the most. God we get. The Trinity, well that's another thing. And even though we use Trinity word in church very often, Comprehending it is a whole different ballgame. The word Trinity itself doesn't appear in the Bible, but there are numerous references to it. At the baptism of Jesus, there is the voice of the Father and the descent of the Spirit. And when Jesus tells of his return to the Father, he promises the coming of the Spirit of God. These are two examples. And then we have this example from our Bible reading today, a passage from the Great Commission. Jesus tells the 11 to go and help people to become disciples and to baptise them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But however many examples there are, it sadly doesn't make it any easier for all of us to comprehend. I've heard many preachers try and use everyday items to explain the Trinity. Three things which are one. Eggs, yolk, white and shell. Apples, seed, core and peel. Fire needing air, fuel and heat. And even a Mars bar with chocolate, nougat and caramel. I think the last one was used purely so he could eat one during the sermon. It may be easier if we think of a single person. For example, I am a mum. 
a wonderful wife, a dear daughter. In fact, there are many other names I am called, steady on, but whatever I am, I'm still Amanda. But all of these examples are just us trying to simplify God. Whether we'd like to admit it or not, I'm sure there have been many times when we've tried to fit God into our human sized minds. We start to think about God and wonder, but how can he really possibly hear all of us praying at once? And what we really mean is that we know us humans couldn't do it. So it must be impossible for God as well. Or we could say, God must have had a beginning sometimes because everything does. When we do this, we are subconsciously holding out a small box and asking God to jump in it. And of course, he doesn't fit because being God is much bigger and deeper and wider than us human beings could ever comprehend. We cannot hold his nature and understand it any more than we can fit the moon into a rucksack or example from the Bible, squeeze a camel through the eye of a needle. But just because we cannot describe God, it doesn't mean we cannot get to know him or that he remains somehow remote from us and aloof from us. We're encouraged to talk, to pray to God every day. We've been given a lifetime to get to know God really well, to live as his friends. We may not always use that time as best we could, but we should keep trying because he's the greatest friend we will ever have. Our God is wonderful and all-knowing. Both the smallest details and the widest sweeps of space are intimately known by him. He is the maker of our universe and of us all. He is the one who came as Jesus to die for us, to save us. And he is present with his people, living in us as the Holy Spirit. And yet he still wants a relationship with each and every one of us. So for those people like me out there who like answers, clarification, explanation, lines drawn under things, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed this week. You're going to have to deal with this mystery. God is more than we will ever understand. Be honest with yourself. Be realistic. But also be grateful. And instead of worrying about the details, let us both, all of us, just celebrate today. Both what we know about God and the God who is more than we can ever fully comprehend. And this should make us excited, not frustrated. It is the relationship with God which transforms his people rather than an impossible definition explanation of it. In other words, we don't have to explain the Trinity before we can receive God's love, his blessings, his grace. Hallelujah, that's what I say. In fact, God goes further and reassures us, as Jacob said in the modern day version of our Bible passage, don't you ever, ever forget this. I am with you always, always. At the end of his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul has those words we often use. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. When we say these words, they are to remind us that we are in the presence of the Trinity and we are to go out and live in that presence. I'm not sure if I've given you new insights or greater understanding of the Trinity in this sermon. But shockingly, I'm not too disappointed in myself because the today is the day of all days when it's not about fully understanding God, but just about having a deeper faith with him and in him as you possibly can. And instead of worrying yourself about the complexity of the Trinity, just remember that today, and each day, you are immersed in the Holy Three 
and to try and continue to deepen your relationship with this amazing God. Being thankful for the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I am but a pupil and you are my teacher, Amanda, but I've got to say that was a belter of a sermon. Thank you. I think I might be getting my head around the Trinitarian God after all. <laughs> it's now time for our intercessions. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Holy and life-giving God, we come to you today with searching minds. Open our hearts as we seek to understand the mystery of the Trinity. Draw us deeper into relationship with you as we seek to bring peace to our souls and nourish us as we journey through life with you. Through this time of trial, we seek your strength. Fill us with your hope and enable us to feel your presence through the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray for all members of our communities in which we serve, for all who are guiding a path through the complexities of the COVID-19 virus, for our leaders, our health workers, along with all key workers at this time. As a church, Lord, help us to hear your guidance as we seek a path towards the future. Guide all those in authority, all who are making decisions that concern the welfare of people. Lord, help us to bring the world together, that we will see the good that is in us all. Help us to look beyond the physical differences that exist between us but recognise the bond that exists between all people through you. Help us to eradicate the division and fear that exists between people and shine your light upon the injustices that blight our world. Lord, we thank you for our community, for those we see and for those who we miss. We hold up to you all those who are unwell, those who are bereaved and grieve a loved one. Enable them to feel your presence, your light, your peace in their hearts. Holy and life-giving God, we thank you for hearing our concerns as we offer you these our prayers. Speak to our hearts and answer those worries that we have. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Bringing all of our prayers together, we say the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. As you know, as you know, as you all know, I'm a massive believer in that God is in everything that is holy, good and peaceful. And over the past few weeks, as I have been out and about, Amanda and I thought it would be a good idea if I took a few photos of some of those who I deliver the service sheets to on a Saturday. So you can say hello virtually to them see their lovely faces and look forward to the time when we are all back together. I've also taken a few snaps of the lovely countryside that lie all around this part, this beautiful part of the island. And after that, 
we were leading beautifully into O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, our final hymn, which is led by our dear Claire. So without further ado, here's the first photo.
Oh Lord My God is a wonderful hymn. As I said, regularly voted the number one hymn. I do hope you enjoyed singing along. It's time to connect with one another spiritually as we share the peace of God within our virtual community. Peace to you from God who is our Father. Peace from Jesus Christ who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit who gives us life. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Our service is almost over. I do hope that it was, as has helped lift your spirits to a degree. I hope that it has helped you feel connected to God and will give you strength for the week ahead. Before we end though, let us pray. O oh God, our mystery, you bring us to life, call us to freedom and move between us with love. May we so participate in your dance of Trinity that our lives may resonate with you now and forever. Amen. May the Father who feeds us, his children, strengthen us on our pilgrimage to the promised land. May the Son who gave his life to lead us towards the light of salvation keep us in eternal life. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, help us to discern God in all things and empower us to proclaim his glory, holiness and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those who you love, both in this age and for all eternity. Amen. It has been a pleasure taking a part in bringing you this time of worship today. I look forward to seeing you all at some point. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye for now.